running a fuel pressure regulator on a carburetor is a must no matter what type of fuel pump you use. And the GMC has been running a deadhead style regulator since I put it together. But today we're switching to a bypass style and I'm going to show you why. Oh, before we get into all the details of the regulators, the different types, why we're changing it, how we're going to route it, run it, whatever. Let me show you what happens on this setup when it gets hot from when it starts. It's a... Uh, uh, I think it's set at like 5 PSI right now. You'll see that here in just a second. But I'm going to cold start it, let it run. I'll speed lap, uh, speed up the timing on the video so uh, you can get to it and watch it really quickly. But I'll show you how quickly the pressure changes on it on a deadhead style setup. So it's a little interesting on this one because a lot of times on a deadhead regulator you'll see that uh, post regulator where the pressure will drop even though the um, truck runs well, uh, I, I've run a you know, very wide open throttle, uh, does great burnouts, all those things that would uh, uh, consume a lot of fuel, it doesn't do that. But the flip side of that is when we get to the dyno, uh, it makes me a little more comfortable, I guess, to see, um, you know, the pressure steady. Uh, that way, if we run into any hiccups, we can see, you know, what's going on and understand where we're at. And obviously, running a bypass style or a turn style is better anyway, just because of the things we talked about earlier. Keeping the fuel flow and keeping it pushed back to the tank, anything that's not being used. Those are all certainly good things and definitely good things that you want to do when you're trying to you know, set up a system and get it all running and, uh, you know, ensure that you've got the best quality of fuel without a lot of heat added to it. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to get uh, the, the fuel all set up, get this regulator off, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, build the new system and then uh, I'll show you how to route it and we'll go from there. Now that you can see what can happen to a regulator uh, and how it drops pressure over time when it gets hot, uh, I'm going to show you what we're going to change to. But before we do, there's one little key thing to make uh, known here. Not all deadhead regulators are going to react that way. Some do, some don't. I've had some that if you set it at 5 PSI, 6 PSI, whatever, and leave it there, you can pretty much count on the gauge never wavering from that the pump makes a difference. Now I've got a mechanical Edelbrock pump on there. Uh, it is the Performer RPM, not the Victor. So it's the low gallons per hour. I say low, I still think it's 110, which is more than plenty for that engine and for what it could handle. But you also have to be very careful and cautious about the tank. Now the fuel tank on the GMC is vented. And as long as that vent line is open, and you're not creating a suction in the tank, you should be good to go. Easy way to find out, fire up the engine. If you see the pressure start dropping, go pop the gas cap off the uh, uh, fuel tank and uh, see if the pressure recovers. If it does, then you've got either the wrong cap or the vent is clogged. So just a little thing to be cautious of before you decide to make that decision. Let's quickly cover again what the differences are between the two because I think it's important to know and you can make the right decision on what you want to run in your vehicle. So a deadhead style regulator means the fuel comes into the regulator at some po entry point. Uh, it has an outlet or two outlets to go to the carburetor and that's it. There is no way for the regulator to regulate the fuel going through the system and return the unused fuel back to the fuel tank, deadhead style regulator. 
the return style regulator is usually called a return style or a bypass style regulator and sends the fuel that's unused back to the tank. That's what it does. Whatever the carburetor needs, it delivers at the pressure that's set by the regulator and everything else gets dumped back to the tank constantly flows through there so it's pretty easy to understand why a bypass or a return style regulator is a really good setup on a more aggressive application because the fuel doesn't heat up it's constantly moving through the system anything that is not used by the carburetor and being held at the regulator is not stopped there and allowing it to heat up it is allowed to pass right back to the fuel tank pump back into a bigger cell hopefully cooled down with the fuel and away from the heat of the engine and allowed to be a little bit more cooler as it comes through the system. Now we've covered the regulators and why you should run it in another video. I'll leave a link to it above. You can follow it and take a look at all the details, but really it boils down to what you want to run. And in this case, the deadhead style regulator was not what I wanted to run given we just made a cam change in that truck oh, maybe about a month and a half ago now and I would like the return style regulator to be installed to keep the fuel pushing back through there. Uh, Mississippi heat here in the Mid-South, it gets pretty warm uh, and uh, I'm sure that that uh, carburetor, while I haven't had any issues with it, I'm sure keeping a little bit cooler fuel up into the carburetor is better for it overall. Plus we're going to the dyno here in a few days or a week or so I guess now and I would rather run a return style on, on the dyno just to make sure that the carburetor is getting all the flow, all the fuel that it needs and anything we're not using will just dump right back into the tank. One little secret here I'm going to have to keep from you, but that's okay. I don't mind teasing it. Maybe mid-year next year, 2026, hopefully a little bit earlier than that. Uh, I have a regulator that I've been working with a, another manufacturer uh, on a little bit of a design, and um, I think you'll like it, um, but it is a uh, bypass style regulator. So when I get that opportunity to talk about it, I will replace uh, the one that's going in with this uh, new high-speed trick one. Can't wait to show it to you. Sorry for the tease. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reroute the system uh, and we're gonna go show you the tank here in just a minute. I need to pull the seat out of the truck, make it a little bit easier for you to see it and make it a little bit easier for me to run the fuel line through the floor of the cab there. But essentially all we're doing is we're, we're putting on a new return style regulator. I've got some fittings set aside here. I've got my twist lock hose and my tool and then we'll just build it. Now the only thing I don't know that I'm going to do is I may run a break in it. So on the return side uh, I may go uh, return out uh, route it down by the filter, down by the pump, run along the fuel rail, or excuse me, the uh, frame rail of the truck, and uh, down the rail up and into the cab uh, where the fuel tank is, and then uh, drop it in. I may add a brake in there, a coupler, uh, just so I can take it apart pretty easily instead of having to pull hose out of the whole system if I don't want to. I'm not sure. We'll see what happens with it. I think I've got plenty of hose to run that without making a cut in there, but uh, if we had to, uh, I certainly will. So now that we got all that out of the way, let's, let me get the seat out and I will show you uh, what's a little bit different about the fuel tank that's in the truck. I know it's not the popular thing to do, but be safe. Go ahead and disconnect the battery. You don't need it. One of the cool things about the tank that I bought uh, several, well, three years ago now, two years ago, is it has a provision for a return line already in it, so I don't have to drill into this tank. Now, we've covered that before on another video on how to add a return line to a factory tank that didn't come with one. And I'll leave a link to that video in the description or I'll link it above so you can go follow it. But it's fairly simple. If this was the case and this was a flat surface across here, this wouldn't be a bad place to add one in. Uh, potentially, the problem is, is a lot of times people go, well, I'll just add it into the vent line. Here's the problem with that is if you do that, you're going to have to change the cap because you are taking the vent away from it. And now you are pumping fuel directly into it. Not a bad thing, I guess, but in this case, because my gas tap cap is exposed on the outside of the truck, um, adding a vent line isn't, you know, adding the return to the vent line isn't really a good idea. It takes away the tank's ability to vent. 
So you'll create a suction and eventually engine will stop running because you are preventing the fuel from flowing. So while it sounds like a bad, not a bad idea, it's generally a horrible idea. So in this case, we're in good shape. Uh, I just need to remove that, uh, install the AN fitting. I will probably run it right along here, down the side of the tank, and then, so yeah, there's the exit for the fuel line coming out of there uh, and uh, one of the vents. So uh, I'll probably just run it right alongside that. Uh, or open up the grommet a little bit to fit the hose in there and we should be good to go. So let me get that out, uh, find a fitting for that and we'll go from there. Okay, I found the uh, AN fitting I'm gonna use. It's a quarter inch uh, thread on that thing. I'm just gonna route it like that. That way uh, seat doesn't push up against it. Uh, don't think that'd be an issue anyway, but uh, let me get that out of there and then uh, we'll get that installed. Nice. Go ahead and put some thread sealer on there. Should be good to go. Okay, next up is the regulator. Let me go ahead and get this. I'm gonna have to put that uh, that fitting on and then, uh, yeah, we'll put the other two and then I need to make a new hose from uh, the uh, uh, filter and gauge down here uh, up to that. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit longer. So let me uh, get that regular off and uh, we'll start making hoses. All right, let's go get the other regulator. All right, I got all fittings on the regulator. Uh, just one more little detail. I think I made mention of this just a minute ago, but use a thread sealant. Don't use tape. Uh, tape tends to break off, uh, especially if you get it inside the thread. Uh, you don't want interfering with the uh, with the flare on there, the 37 degree flare on there. Uh, you don't want to break apart, head into the carburetor, bad things happen. So always use thread sealant on uh, fuel system stuff on uh, AN hoses. Not a huge deal, but I think I can reduce the length here. Uh, the way I've got this set up with uh, uh, the gauge in there and then two couplers, uh, it's just made it too long. And I'm plenty clear of the fan. I'm not even, I'm miles away from that. Not concerned about that. But uh, when I start running fuel line down there, I just want to bring it in a little bit closer to the engine. So uh, I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to order another fitting and then I think what I'll be able to do is uh, be able to put the gauge uh, in a little bit different spot uh, and then uh, yeah collapse that down a little bit so it's not all just daisy chained together so I'll get that figured out but for the time being uh, cutting the hose to the length shouldn't be a big of a deal we'll uh, get that all sorted out. Not sure how well that'll show up here that close but Anytime I'm wrapping fuel lines or routing fuel lines past headers, uh, or even regular exhaust too, it's not a bad idea to wrap them. So I've got two things that are helping that out. One, I've got the wrap on the fuel lines so you can kind of see, hopefully <laughs> both lines there, the new return line we just routed. But I also have this little flap that I put on there that comes down, just kind of hangs there. So a little bit of double protection, I guess. Um, anyway, just helps the, the fuel lines, transmission lines, just uh, keep them uh, a little protected from the heat. All right, got her all installed, buttoned up here and did a little bit different there. I did run out of link to hose, so I did have to have a, had a coupler and a, 
very short uh, length of hose. So, yeah, shame on me. I should have uh, planned ahead. But uh, came out a little bit different spot. Uh, I was going to put a lid over there uh, where the uh, fuel outlet went. But uh, it just meant drilling a hole and drilling those grommets out. I had another grommet. I just RTV'd it in there to keep it from moving around. But it's in there nice and tight. Should be good to go. You can kind of see that little uh, shield that I put in there. That's been in there for, I don't know, a year or so. Uh, I don't know if that it helps, but uh, it's not a bad thing to have that on there. It's really one of the reasons why I have this side of the truck wrapped is just to protect the transmission lines and fuel lines going through there. Other side of the truck, I never did wrap that, but uh, it also gave me an idea on, a, on another video that I'll do, but uh, that'll just have to be some time down the road. Yeah, install went fairly well. Again, I'm gonna have to figure out something else. I, I just don't like uh, uh, how that's all put together. And that's a dash six that's coming out of that uh, Edelbrock uh, fuel hose. So probably what I'll end up doing, or, or fuel line, probably what I'll end up doing is, um, I've got a couple of different ways to mount the gauge, but I will probably end up downsizing all that. I had, just when I was putting it together, I had a Dash 8 uh, fitting coupler in there that had uh, the uh, hole for the 8th uh, inch NPT for the fuel pressure gauge, and it just made sense to use it, and just had daisy chain a bunch of stuff together, and eh, it's okay, but uh, now I need to get smart about it and do it right and buy fittings that I need. Got some little things I need to clean up. That fuel line's too close to that heater hose. I'm not moving the hose. Um, so what I'll end up doing is when I collapse that line down and move that regulator a little bit closer to the engine, uh, it should drop it right where I want it to be and should be in good shape. I just fired it up a few minutes ago. Runs fine, no leaks, so uh, I'm happy there. But uh, now the real test comes. Uh, need to get to the dyno here. Eh, it's gonna be a few might be a few weeks still away, but uh, just depends on when he's got time to see me. So uh, got to get that scheduled. And uh, yeah, so we've got the regulator set up, settled the way I want it for the dyno and uh, should be good to go. Still have her set at five. She'll bounce for a few minutes and seems to stabilize out. So, well, yeah, we're in good shape. Just need to put the seat back in and get it all dialed in and put it back together and we should be good to go. So if you have any questions on this one, don't hesitate, leave them down below. Happy to answer them for you. Um, again, bypass is just a little bit more, I think, beneficial on a uh, fuel side of things and just maintaining the same pressure all the time to the carburetor, which is what I was interested in, especially with the VRS testing that I'm going to do on this here pretty soon. So anyway, should be good to go. So if you got any questions, leave them down below and we will uh, catch you guys on the next one. We'll see you.